Hello, and welcome to Peggy's Tropical Garden, coming to you from the Florida Keys with a full tropical garden tour. I'll show you some Hoya, philodendron, cacti, succulents, orchids, all kinds of plants that grow in my yard year round. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. It's a time of year when I really should be cleaning up my garden. You'll see there's weeds and all kinds of stuff from trees that have fallen in here. But I decided to go ahead and take a look at things and take you along while I'm checking things out to see where, exactly where I stand. Um, this is my cactus and succulent bed. I used to be really into cacti and succulents. And now not so much. I still enjoy them. But I realized coming out here, I've forgotten the names of most of them. And I used to know them all. And I have weeds. Apparently, I'm into them too because I have so many of them. But, uh, yeah, things are looking a little overgrown. Uh, a lot of growing went on over the winter months. This cactus alone was much smaller um, at the end of last summer, and it's growing well. This is a little dish garden that I did a video on a while back. It's doing well. And this is my Victoria Regine agave that has had some problems during rainy season. So I had to repot it and it seems to have gotten over its problems. And this is a desert rose that is also struggling. This is an agave uh, desmediana. It is not struggling. It's actually in bloom. And once they bloom, they die out, which is a problem when you have a really big plant like that. It just leaves a big void in your garden. So let's see. Going back up here, there's a crown of thorn plants, uh, aloe arborescence, I believe this one is. I have lots of different aloe plants. I find them fascinating, and I love when they get sun-stressed and turn red. And this is some blue elf um, aloe and some hedgehog aloe right here. And lots of things are in bloom right now. Lots of aloe are in bloom right now. As you can see, and there's a desert rose. I collect desert rose plants. I have several different varieties. I'm finding I don't like the um, grafted ones though because they don't seem to do too well. I notice most of my grass grafted uh, desert roses are struggling. That's a helicopter plant and uh, another aloe course a different variety and let's see another desert rose different color flower and yeah they're just not looking like they should now this one I do prune a lot because I want just the flowers and stuff to be at the tips so I'm playing with this one a little bit it has a lot of spent flowers I need to clean all of these plants up they just don't look their best so the garden, like I said, it's that time of year, another desert rose, time of year when I need to do some pruning and all kinds of stuff. These euphorbias are looking really good and healthy and they've grown a lot. I bought these as very small plants and that blue um, cactus over there also, and that's an Eve's needle. And here's this Desmediana, um, agave over here behind this eaves needle and i'm going to show you this bloom spike if you've never seen one hold on this is a variegated euphorbia i'm working my way over to the desmediana i'm trying to see what's the best vantage point anyway um here it goes this is what the bloom spike looks like and it gets all these little buds and they open and if you recall, my Victoria Regina had a bunch of stuff on it. It just dumps the spent flowers. It, there's the top. It's about 10 feet tall. They get really big. They have deep roots. And now I have to dig all of that up. And once they bloom, they die. And that's why at the bottom you'll see that it has some, like the um, leaves are turning brown. Aloe brevifolia. This is my... Pacopodium, Pacopodium lamerii, also known as Madagascar palm. I planted those in the ground. That in the ground, it just got huge. Here's the other one. I have two of them. And they're doing great. 
this is my agave blue glow look at that it looks like when the light hits it just right it looks like the, the it's on fire this is an agave ferdinand and a and agave um victoria regina and another crown of thorns more agave over there this elephant bush that yes it's in a pot it's just grown over the pot so much but i'm kind of liking it like that so i've left it but that's what you call a full plant and another different variety of crown of thorns and coming over here there's my little cactus it's got uh it looks like it has um mealy bug i need to treat that and this is my yucca that has put off a pup and yeah i've had this one for a while now it's so big and bushy i love it i have it up lit at night and it just looks beautiful with the light underneath it but it's gotten quite large i had that as a little plant and over here on the other side there's um some aloe this is actually a pilia plant of sort that's my border plant it's oh it's amazing how overgrown everything is right now this pilia border is just encroaching on everything on um, my bromeliads that are in here this is my croton i love these crotons that um that's an agave attenuata it's one of the few that doesn't have any spikes on it um yeah just oh and I cut over here to the back of this um, cactus and succulent garden because I saw this in my Sansevieria cylindrica. Look at that. It's going to it's gonna give me flowers. It's Yeah, it's getting ready to bloom. How cool is that? Excited about that. So anyway, let's see. Is there anything else? No. Back over here um, to the overgrown land. I uh, have some bromeliads. This pilia is just like really out of control. And there's some more crown of thorns. Um, my treasured desert rose. It has all these weeds in the pot that need to be pulled out. This is the one my daughter gave me about 10 years ago as a little plant. And it just really likes to, to bloom year round. Just big, just a big plant full of blooms more bromeliads another agave attenuata some crotons there's my agave imperialis over here let me show you that found that at lowe's i have been looking for that for a long time now i see them all the time at lowe's and over here by it is one of my large sticks on fire plants known as a pencil cactus and here's the second one the one that broke that time so it's much smaller, but I love when they're red, when they're sun stressed. I think that's so pretty, the reds and yellow. I have um, some native shrubs over here, some jasmine plants. Here's a hibiscus that's giving me a nice bloom. And let's see what else we can see. There's a ponytail palm up in there. Of course, more desert roses. <laughs> so there's my white desert rose don't see those too much this is a jasmine plant and let's work our way over here these are some project plants over here so they're just kind of sitting there on hold and then here's my succulent fountain that is that's doing okay um yeah it needs attention probably needs everything pulled out i think i'm going to move the whole fountain but at least over here, the lighting is better. It's not in the harshest of sun all the time. The gymnocolisum are um, blooming like crazy. They're very happy. Lots of little buds. And here's another one over here in bloom. They open up and close. All kinds of succulents back here. Some aloe, some sedum. And Kalanchoe. Just, it's just looking like a mess to me right now. I think it's important to show that everything isn't always all pulled together. And this certainly is not. My garden is in an embarrassing mess right now. But I usually don't mess with it during the winter months. I just let the plants 
grow and do their thing. The trees dumping stuff on all the plants. And, you know, we got down into the 40s a couple of nights um, during the winter. So there's some things that didn't do well because, you know, they're not used to that kind of temperature. But I'm just glad to see a lot of things are alive. So instead of going that way, I think I'll take you around the back side of my bro of this garden. This is the bromeliad bed. I never come around the back side and I never show you back here. But there's my bees. We are beekeepers and we get our own honey and everything. But bromeliads are looking well. And they have all kinds of other things growing up in there too. A mess. And um, this is that Bromelia, uh, Brazilian snow plant. I can't remember the name of the, the actual name of the plant, but um, I got that for $8. Remember on one of my shopping trips, I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this dragon fruit, so it's just sitting there. But yeah, look how huge this plant has gotten. It's amazing, and I don't do anything to it. It just has been sitting out here ever since I bought it last summer. Here's one of my philodendrons. I did not buy this. It was in the tree, and I just took it down and stuck it in the ground, and it just grows and does its thing. I think it's a lickety split or a siloam. I'm not sure which one that is, so if you know which philodendron that is, let me know. And um, some pentas. They're always in bloom. There's that pothos that my husband went in the woods by the house and pulled out of the tree for me. Crotons are looking like they enjoyed the, um, the winter very much. Now they're getting ready to get beaten up by the sun in the winter, um, summer. It's already very hot. Another pencil cactus. Quarter lines are looking good. Yeah, that one's looking really nice. Very pretty. And let's see. And that, I'm, I'm enjoying that croton too, that yellow and green there. I like the contrast. And these are native trees um, that we planted around the perimeter of the, um, the garden. And more pentas and lizards, always lizards. More quarter lines. They're looking really nice. They'll be brown next time you see them because they get hot. Some Dracaena. These are actually the tops of plants that I cut off and just stuck them in the ground. And now they're well rooted. Here's another one. Love the red margin on these. But that's how I get them. I just cut the heads off, stick them in the ground, and I get a new plant. More native trees, more pintas. And look over here. This is just, I cut this off. Um... This plant grew from the top off of a pineapple I used for one of my videos. And I just kind of threw it over there and it grew. Now I have a pineapple growing this year. Euphorbia. And the bromeliads are looking sad. Things are looking... Oh, this dogtail cactus was dying over the winter when it got too cold. And now it's coming back. I need to clean the dead parts out. The um, croton, another variety. So, lots of color. It might not be clean, a clean and neat garden, but it has lots of color. And now the bromeliads are not, I mean, they look bad, but what they do is they pop when they're getting ready to fade out. They pop and give you a new plant, and then the mother plant dies. So that's what's going on here. And you'll see that's going on with a lot of the bromeliads right now. Uh, quarter line looking good. There's my chocolate one back there. Still in the grow pot. I didn't, I actually did repot it, but I put it in a grow pot because I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. There's my Picasso's paintbrush croton. And yeah, that's a poinsettia. <laughs> they are tropical plants, actually. Alocasia. That's a dendrobium orchid that's not in bloom right now. I don't know what that one's waiting on. Air plant, another agave attenuatum, attenuata. I love them. And this one's, this uh, quarter line's about to 
do some flowering. More alocasia. Yeah, yeah. The bromeliads, some of them are looking kind of bad because, like I said, they're pupping and, and dying off. But, um, and then others are looking just fine. So at least they have the decency to replace themselves on their way out. So I appreciate that. They're not looking bad. I don't have my waterfall on right now. I need to clean it up some first. I like these little bromeliads too. So just year round color. Now, let me see if I can find. Oh, there's my Alocasia Hilo. Got that last year. It's just sitting in the pot over here. It's been here all winter since, well, ever since I put it out here when I bought it last summer. It's doing great. It has some new growth down in there. You see that? Looking good. Looking good. All right. This is that pothos that my husband pulled out of the woods. I want to show you. It's growing all the way over here into the, my dendrobium. And the leaves are so big and round. And it goes all the way over here. And nice big leaves. That's a golden pothos, people. So it lost a lot of leaves after we pulled it out of the woods. But clearly it's healthy now. And there's my dendrobium that's in bloom now. I like that. The um, looks so monochromatic, all one color. I love it. And what's going on over here? Oh, I have some everything over here. There's a Hoya in one of my orchids that's been out here since last summer. It was a little teeny piece. It's growing. Some cryptanthus. Um, these are my orchids. They stay out here year round. This Vanda went through some, it had a fungus issue. So as you can see at the bottom and it's doing much better now. As you can see, the new growth doesn't have that problem. Here's another dendrobium in bloom. Yeah. Don't throw out your dendrobiums because they look like dead sticks because they're still alive. Probably air plants. A ball of air plants. Tislandia is that, um, or Spanish moss is also an air plant. And ooh, here's a Hoya. Uh, oh, it's a Car Carnosa compacta as well. Put this out. It's been out here. Yeah, this was a teeny piece. It has grown quite a bit. It's been out here for about a year. I like to take, uh, there's a Cattleya orchid um, with some new growth. I like to take plants that I'm growing inside and throw some of it outside. So I can see how differently it grows from the plant inside. So anyway, some more bromeliads and things like that. Um, like I said, the cold weather was not kind to some of my plants. But I have some bromeliads and orchids mounted to the tree here see those um, this orchid has been in bloom forever it does not want to die out and I'm like fine I don't mind a bit and there's a um, uh, what's left of my Semper Vivum that were out here that's the one that didn't burn up this orchid too has been in bloom for probably at least a month month and a half so more bromeliads I need to clean all of those up and another philodendron that was just growing in this tree when we bought this house. So I just leave it there. And one thing I do want to show you is my staghorn. It's a staghorn we rescued from a friend's house. They moved to the house. It was there. They didn't want it. They were going to throw it out. So we got it and we put it up here. But we had a little tree house, which was blocking all the light. We've gone through some changes to rescue this thing, and now it looks like it's going to live, so we're quite pleased. I just wanted to make sure you got a look at that. And there you have it, an update on my garden. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.